scene you're about to watch was filmed as part of the Gaiety School of Acting's 2022 production of Macbeth. We've taken some key scenes and broken them down into bite-sized pieces with description and analysis. We hope you find them enjoyable and informative, and please subscribe for more Shakespeare resources. Preceding this scene, Banquo has been murdered, Fleance has escaped, Macbeth has had terrible visions, and Macduff has fled to England to seek help to overthrow Macbeth. So we know that Macbeth's kingship is in peril. To understand this scene, let's split it into three parts. Number one, the witch's casting of the spell. Number two, the supernatural answers to Macbeth's demands. And finally, number three, Macbeth's return to the cold, harsh reality of political and social life. Watch and see if you can find any similarities with the opening scenes of the play. Happier Christ, it's time to time. Round about the cauldron go, in the poison entrails grow, told it under cold stone, days and nights as thirty one, sweltered venom, sleeping got, boiled out first in the charmed pot. Double, double, double toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron bubble, fill it of a penny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. I have newt and toe frog. Wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boiling bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, which is a mummy, maw and buff. Off the raven, salt sea shark, root of hemlock, digged in the dark, liver. A blaspheming Jew, gall of goat and slips of you, silvered in the moon's eclipse, nose of Turk and Tartar's lips, finger of a bird strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drab, make the screw thick and slab, add there to a tiger's children for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double, toiling trouble, fire burning cauldron bubble, sewage with a baboon's blood, then the <laughs> By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. These ingredients are all entrails of loathed animals or human beings, which taken all together could create a full monster legs, lips, teeth, scales, and so on. The implication here is that Macbeth is no longer a complete human being. He is half man, half monster. His arrival is announced by the weird sisters. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? I conjure you by that which you profess, however you come to know it, answer me. Though you untie the winds and make them fight against the churches, even till destruction sicken, answer me that which I ask you. Speak. Demand. Say if thou rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call him. Let me see him. Macbeth appears demanding answers. He matches the power of the witches with a powerful curse of his own. He wants an answer, even if it means he has to unleash the elements, even if the earth should tumble into ruin. Not content with hearing it from their lips, he wants to hear it from their masters. The witches comply. Sow's blood that hath eaten her nine sparrow, grease sweating from the murderer's living crow, into the flame. Come high or low, thyself and off his death we show. Tell me thou knows power. He knows thy thought, hear his speech, but say thou not. Macbeth, 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 beware, Macduff, beware the thane of Fife. Dismiss me! Enough! Whate'er thou art, for thy great caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fears aright. Yet one word more! He will not be commanded. Here is another, more potent than the first. Macbeth! 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 At thy three years I have heard thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man for none. Of woman born shall harm Macbeth. 
Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? Yet I will make assurance double sure, and take a bond of faith thou shalt not live, that I might tell pale hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. <laughs> but what's this? The rise is like the issue of a king, and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty. Listen, but speak, speak not, not to it. Be lion meddled, proud, and take no care who shafes, who frets. Or who conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquish be till great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane shall come against him. But well, that will never be. Sweet Bodeman's glory. Who can impress the forest, beat the trees, and fix their earthbound roots? Sweet Bodeman's glory. Yet yeah, tell me, if you're asking, tell so much. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall upon thee. Let me know. Show. 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down! Thy crown sears mine eyeballs, and thy hair, thou other gold-bound brow, is like the first. A third is like the former, and filthy hags, why you show me this? Why will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet, who brings a glass and shows me many more. Horrible sight, now I see it is true. For the blood both are banquo smiles upon me, and points at them for his. What, is it so? Where are they? Gone! Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without there! Macbeth's demand is answered by a sequence of apparitions. Unlike Banquo's ghost or the dagger, they cannot be explained by Macbeth's heat-oppressed brain. They are definitely summoned by the witches. At this point, we should assess the extent to which Macbeth is responsible for his own actions. What is certain is Macbeth's response to each apparition. He appears to be super confident, even flippant, in his replies. He shows little fear or respect for them. Macbeth is left on his own to decide how to interpret these prophecies. For us, as the audience, important questions are raised. How do we understand the notion of fate? And what is Shakespeare trying to say? 